right, let's get back to some boring subjects like Bob Casey. So Bob Casey, boy, isn't that boring after these wonderful, isn't that, I gotta talk about Bob Casey, I'll start falling asleep. Don't fall asleep as we talk about sleeping Bob. <laughs> sleeping Bob, ha! Ah, that's it, sleeping Bob, that's it. Here to talk about the Trump factor on the 2018 midterms, Republican strategist Evan Siegfried. Back with me, Nick Confessori with the New York Times, Caitlin Huey Burns with Real Clear Politics. Uh, Evan, how worried are Republicans about the Ohio race? Let's just start with the, with the nuts and bolts. They're pretty worried about this race because if we lose this seat, and it's very possible, it's a narrative setter that Democrats mm -hmm. have momentum going in. Look what happened with Connor Lamb in Pennsylvania, where it was a district that Trump won by almost 20 points. And he, uh, Connor Lamb eked out a victory there. And the number one issue that helped Connor Lamb was health care. All of the voters who said health care was either very important or the most important issue broke for Connor Lamb. And Democrats are going to have to somehow uh, utilize health care as an issue going into the midterms. The Republicans are let's, let, me, let me ask you about this race mm -hmm. in particular and whether or not you think that, that the president can make a difference. And I'll argue the president's side, which is that he gets his base riled up. He gets people out. He gets them thinking about this race. Well, let's see whether or not he tries to actually make the case for why they should vote for the Republican. Having said that, small, small, small numbers of people turn out in these kinds of elections. And if he can get people fired up, maybe he could be the difference. He got his base fired up for Rick Saccone, and that didn't help him against Bron uh, Connor Lamb in Pennsylvania. Okay. And he's going to go there, and he's going to go and do what he did for Lou Barletta last night. It's going to be the recounting of the 2016 election, almost like Al Bundy saying, remember that time I scored three touchdowns for Polk High? He's going to talk you, about you himself. Led me, you led me into this perfectly. I want to <laughs> go back to last night, because we've put together a little airing of his grievances from last night. Take a listen. I kept saying, why aren't they calling Pennsylvania? Remember an hour, two hours, so long. 98% and they wouldn't call it. So for two and a half months, I hear Texas is in play. That means it's so close. And they said, Utah is in play. So it hits eight o'clock and they go like two seconds after eight. Donald Trump has won the state of Texas. Donald Trump has won the state of Utah. I mean, maybe I missed it. This whole uh, they call Pennsylvania too late isn't yet a new grievance for me. But at what point does it get old, Nick? Well, look, I thought Festivus was for the rest of us. But this is Festivus <laughs> just for the president. Uh, and it's the same every time. Uh, I do think, look, the nickname is even tired. The, the Bob Casey, you know, sleeping yeah. Bob Casey. Uh, like people, energy, people in that Jared, room yeah. love it. But the point is that these these, are, these these rallies are only partly intended to help the person they're scheduled for. They're also intended by the White House staff as therapy sessions for the president, a place for him to feel good, to get him out of the White House, away from the investigations, where he's surrounded by love. This is a man who has proven that he is fairly needy. He needs affirmation. These rallies give it to him. But you know who also needs affirmation? These Republican candidates yeah. in tough races. Who, in this case, I think spoke for like three minutes or something like that. So that's the Trump factor. Can we talk about the Omarosa factor? Uh, there's a headline in the Daily Mail. Apparently, they got their hands on a little excerpt from her book. But the, the headline is pretty provocative. Something serious was going on in Donald's brain. Omarosa talks about how President Trump exhibited what she calls a mental decline that could not be denied as she watched his rambling Lester Holt interview in her explosive book. The Mail, again, gets these excerpts of the book. It's called Unhinged. Uh, it's an insider account of the Trump White House. It's not out until the 14th. But some other uh, quotes about the Trump-Holt interview. I knew something wasn't right. Throughout this erratic and contradictory interview, I kept thinking, oh, no, oh, no, this is bad. Donald rambled. He spoke gibberish. I mean, sh I, I also want to add that we've reached out to the White House for a reaction on this. We haven't gotten anything yet. Is this a disgruntled employee, somebody who left the White House under bad terms? Is it somebody who has known the president for many, many years, going back mm -hmm. to her days in the early years of The Apprentice, mm -hmm. and her observations matter? Or is this just feeding both sides? It's feeding the people who want to believe yeah. there's something wrong with the president, and for the other folks, then she just becomes part of this whole cacophony of fake news. I think it plays to both sides. 
And remember when uh, Mama Rosa was fired by the White House, there were White House officials kind of denigrating her and saying, you know, she she lost. They had to friend. drag her out of there, kicking exactly, and screaming. Exactly, but it, it raised the question though about the president hired her for a position in the White House, and so you know, and for putting, a long time, Nick thought she was really great. And putting this in the context of the midterm campaign, right? Whether this just feeds into the aggregate of the um, you know grievances that that Trump's opponents will have towards him and Republican candidates when you just hear these stories over and over again. Look, much as for Michael Wolff's book, there will be a huge appetite for yeah. this book mm. from, from a liberal audience. Yep. I would just say, if you didn't think Amaras was a credible person when she worked for the president, I would have some skepticism about her claims right now, to be fair to the president. Um, there is still no evidence that he is in mental decline. Um, his personality is pretty erratic. But if you're going to take it from her, then I, I, I would also I add can't that she's you. trying to do an image rehab because she really ticked yeah. off the left and now yeah. it's trying to appeal to them. But it does raise the question of what Trump was saying at the end of the rally last night. He says America is winning again. And is it really winning when 50% of the country consistently says we're going in the wrong track? When, is it winning when we are now attacking the very justice system? Is it winning when foreign investment is now at an almost zero level because of this president and other companies are scared to get involved? Is it winning when we're separating families uh, at the border? Is it winning when we are going out and saying that we're going to have health care that's going to be great, but we know that health care is going to go up in cost? It's not winning. It's very depressing. Evan Siegfried, thanks to you. Uh, thanks to our long, one hour long guest, Caitlin. Thank you. Glad you had a good birthday yesterday. She, so she was much. out late, I think, but <laughs> she came in anyway. Always good to see you, Nick Confessori. Appreciate it. And we'll be right back with today's big picture.